everyone, Fuseman coming at you. And today, I'm actually not able to make a live stream because I'm attending a friend's graduation, but I decided to make a video tutorial on a topic someone requested last week, which is on the lab render. And that's what you're seeing on the screen right now. So there's a before on the left and a after we implement the lab render on the right. And you can really tell it's night and day. There's no light bleeding and there's no anti-aliasing, which you see on the left because of the way that Unity's default settings for lighting is implemented. And the way Valve handles it really makes it a lot more crisper and the shadows are a lot cleaner. So kudos to them for making this accessible and really easy to use. And now I'm going to show you where you can actually get the starter project to follow along with this tutorial. Now, if you go to fusedbr.com, I'll put a link in the description as well as an annotation in the video. You can find a project post on the power of Valve's lab render. And there's also a download link to the starter project, which you can find right here. And now the reason that we're actually creating a website for not just this video, but also our channel and community in general is to really help facilitate a good communication with not only us, but also the developer community. Something significantly better than comments in our past live streams. So hopefully this is going to be a helpful site for everyone to use. And we're really looking forward to actually f finishing this up and launching it. But you can sign up now. There's, there's really not much where we're adding in a form. And you can actually go ahead and post suggestions here. So uh, that's definitely something we want to help facilitate. And this should hopefully help organize a lot of things. So check that out. And l we would love as much feed feedback as you can. But as for this tutorial, make sure to go ahead and download the starter package and unzip that. And then you can then go ahead and get that into Unity. So now that we have our project downloaded and unzipped, let's go ahead and open up Unity. So you're required to use Unity 5.4. So if you don't have that, go to their website and download the beta. Or if you're watching this in the future, you probably it's not a beta anymore. I think it's supposed to be released sometime soon in June 2016. And so now we're going to hit open and then go to the Spy VR live stream. And here we go. And just select folder. And we're going to have to hit continue because it was made originally in 5.3 and we're going to have to upgrade that. So that process takes a little bit of time, but it's not too bad because the project isn't super huge. I mean, we just put in some basic assets and then we should have it. So this is going to pop up. It's really simple. We just have to hit accept. It's just asking for Windows 64 as opposed to just Windows in general. And so we're going to go to the test scene, and that's where we'd actually done a lot of the work. And so here we go. I'm just going to hit play to show you guys what exactly is happening. And probably actually minimize the game view, because you get a lot more information in the scene view. So you can see here, there's like a little light bleeding from all the spotlights in the drone. I'm actually going to go ahead and remove the roof for you, so that you can just kind of see all of the lights flickering around everywhere. And this is just basically Unity's default maze, or sorry, default lighting. And so now we're actually, let's now that we've kind of seen some of the effects that are happening right now, it's like the lighting's a little wonky. Let's go ahead and actually import in the lab render. So to do that, I'm going to go to Window, Asset Store, or if you have the shortcut, Control-9. I'm just going to drag that out so you can get a full view of things. I'm going to get the lab render. Click here. And so this will be a download if this is your first time using the lab render. I have it as an import because I've tested it out before. And I'm just going to hit import. There we go. OK, awesome. So now that we have the lab render, we can we get this pop up here that's asking for some settings. And so that's just setting our shadow cascades to one and then the pixel light count to 99 <laughs> instead of four, which I'll, I'll tell you right now that makes a huge difference. So let's go ahead and hit accept. Of course, we made the right choice. And let's just try it out with those changes. And you'll actually notice a pretty huge difference already. So uh, go to the scene view, get rid of this roof. And now, all of a sudden, that light is not bleeding through the wall anymore. And it's a good time. And actually, things just got a lot better, even from just using the basic settings that this is all still Unity. Um, you can actually still, if, with a little bit of lighting there, you can still see it's a little wonky. It's not perfectly smooth. 
There's some aliasing. You can zoom in closer. It's, it's, it, I mean, there's still problems because we're still not using the lab render, but it did get a little better just by using the default settings that the lab render is asking for. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and stop that. And so now that we have a lab render in here, I'm going to go to the documentation and I'll just go ahead and open up the documentation. And surprisingly, they did a really nice job with the lab render documentation uh, compared to Steam VR. And I'm really grateful for that. But there's a lot of good information in here. Highly recommend checking out and reading it. Um, the main core things that you're going to want to pay attention to are the fact that they, they have this, they basically list out all of the things that they're really changing as opposed to what Unity is doing. So they're adding in the single for, forward rendering, which is pretty huge, and then the MSSA, MSAA is also a really big change as far as anti-aliasing, so you don't get those kind of dark lines, especially on shadows. You have the adaptive quality, which if I remember correctly, it's simply just for maintaining frame rate and like adapting the quality so that it is good for your computer. Uh, you can you can throw in some custom shaders if you have that, and then they can be adapted towards using the lab. And then this is this part here. I think honestly was a little weird to me. It seemed uh, basically if you add this gl flush command, which is part of the lab render, it improves performance. But it's surprising that that affects the GPU just to to maximize throughput. Seems like something that should already be built into the GPU. But oh well, good to know that. That helps. <laughs> and then they have a really quick start guide that we're going to walk through right now on actually implementing the lab render into your scene. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we've got to do is go to our camera rig. And the camera rig here is built in from previous versions of Steam VR. If you, if you have the beta, you can actually, if you're starting from a fresh project, you can actually just throw the main camera in. And if you put some virtual reality supported and use the OpenVR API, which I'll show in a little bit, then you can actually just use the main camera straight up without having to use the camera rig. The one downside is you don't get the hand controller, so getting the Steam VR plugin is nice for that, uh, at least for now, anyways. And I'm just going to go to the camera eye. And I'm going to add this, uh, I already have it typed, the Valve camera. So I'm going to have to add that in. And those, the, there are a bunch of settings here, a lot of them that were addressed in the documentation. So if you want to play around with those, you can definitely can for optimization purposes. I'm just going to leave the default values for right now because it'll still show off whatever I want to show off. And then the next thing we have to do is actually go ahead and find all of our lights in the scene that are dynamic. In this case, it's all our lights. And we're just going to add a valve real-time light to them. And again, a lot of settings as far as like specifically for shadows that we need to pay attention to, occlusion culling, all that good stuff. You can play around with that, but for now, the default settings are perfectly fine. And we're going to go ahead and close all our search options. That just leaves all the spotlights open, but you're fine, whatever. And the next thing we have to do is go to Valve Shader Dev and click Convert All Material to Valve Shaders. And so that'll go through our whole project assets directory and basically convert all of the standard materials that we have into Valve standard shaders. And I can actually go ahead and show that to you. So normally, if you create a material, it'll be a standard material. And it'll look pretty much exactly the same. But here is Valve's version, and they just use that to effectively go ahead and implement their lab render techniques. So there's that, and now the next step you have to do is, I go through build settings, you can also go through project settings players, and you just go to the player settings, and here, just make sure, uh, this project is specifically was built for SteamVR, so it, the uh, Unity detected that, and already automatically put in OpenVR, and virtual reality supported, but just go ahead and double check that, sometimes you'll see the Oculus plugin is on there, and you want to just make sure that OpenVR is the only thing available. And so the last thing you have to do in this, you go to Edit, Project Settings, and Quality. And so in here, just you want to make sure to disable shadows. And so the reason for that is because Valve, with their lab render, they're already calculating the shadows. You can see those settings set on the Valve camera and the Valve lights. 
So just making sure we completely disable Unity Shadows is the way that they want us to handle that. That may change in the future, but for now I think that's perfectly fine. I'm just going to drag this over, and we are in the nether right now. I'm just going to quickly close through these. And let's open up the roof again, just so that we can see our scene. And there we go. And it definitely, it, it'll still look the same once we put back the roof. And there we go. So now we're in here. And let's just go ahead and run it and see what changed. <laughs> so there we go see that the light is wow okay those shadows look a lot more realistic to than what we were seeing before when I first set it up right so again move over here they're effectively capturing the drones there's no none of that aliasing and overall it's just a lot cleaner and looks really nice and I'm actually just to kind of show this off a little bit more I'm gonna go ahead and quickly add in a spotlight to my left controller so that currently in this a project doesn't really do anything so to do that actually no I'm gonna go here go to light spotlight and I'm just gonna leave the settings the same because I think that's fine and now I'm just going to cut really fast and then jump into VR actually I completely forgot um, before I jump into VR I am going to remember to actually add a valve real-time light and that will make sure that it actually renders because I just quickly jumped in realized that that didn't happen and, and so remember to add that to any light that you do it's a little extra work but the effects are pretty good so now let me go ahead and jump back in all right cool so now we have a spotlight in here and it's working exactly as we want to I'm gonna go ahead and teleport around because that's what we built and yeah this is implementing the lab render. I can tell you right now, these lights look a lot nicer. The shadows look a lot nicer than what was currently being developed. And it was all free. Valve did a really nice job making this super, super easy to use. And the effects are really stunning. So hope this is useful. And I'm going to go ahead and quickly put up again a side-by-side -side view of what we had before and what we have now because I think that'll really highlight some of the effects that we're getting for free and I think that's really amazing so let me go ahead and jump out of VR so as you can see it's pretty night and day as far as the benefits we're really getting out of the using the lab render so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something if you have any questions make sure to leave them in the comments below and either I or someone else in the community can help answer them and if you want to see more of these videos or more of these live streams, make sure to like and subscribe. Or you can also follow us on social media. And if you have suggestions for other tutorials that you'd like to see in the future, whether that be video tutorials or live stream tutorials, make sure to leave those suggestions on our website by going to fusedvr.com. But other than that, this has been Fuseman. I'm signing out.